Good morning people, or afternoon, or evening, or night, whatever time you're watching this. Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name's Tracy, and today is the 9th of June, which means I have been on Slimming World, or on the Slimming World journey, for exactly six months. And in two days time, it'll actually be six, six months since I uploaded my first video, which was a monthly shopping haul. It was really bad. Go back and watch it and see how awful it was. I mean, I'm not saying I've got much better, but I've got a little bit better since then. So I've been on Slimming World for six months, and I thought I would celebrate that by doing a little video called, well, you'll know by the title already, 10 things I've learned since joining Slimming World. So I have been eating so much better in the last six months than I have been my whole life, basically. And to date, I've lost just under two stone, which might not seem a lot to you guys, but it is so much to me because it's the most I've lost ever when I've ever done some sort of healthy eating plan. And I'm also the smallest I've been since I was a teenager in clothes and things like that. I'm obviously looking so much better, not that I can tell, I'll speak about that in a bit, but I've been getting a lot of compliments and people telling me that I look a lot better and oh wow well, you've lost weight. So I'm really enjoying Slimming World. I have no plans in the future to change to any other healthy eating plan. I'm happy with Slimming World and I'm sticking to it. And also a little disclaimer before I go into all these, these are just my points of view. It doesn't reflect those of Slimming World, I think I have to say that. It doesn't reflect those of anybody else that follows the Slimming World. Plan. It's just my points of view and things I've learned on my journey. They won't all work for everybody, but maybe if you're thinking of joining Slimming World or switching from another healthy eating plan, they might help you, they might encourage you or give you some expectations, expectations of what to expect. Okay. <laughs> the first thing that I've learned since joining Slimming World is if you think of it as a quick fix or a diet, you will fail. And that is a direct comparison from me two years ago when I joined Slimming World to now. Because the last time I done it, I just wanted to lose weight. I just wanted to lose weight and I had this vision in my head that I wanted to be all nice and slim and wear bikinis when I was going on holiday that year, which was to probably Corfu, I think it was. And I just wanted to lose as much weight as possible. And the first few weeks I lost a lot of weight. Actually, the first week I lost eight pounds. This was two years ago, by the way. Eight pounds. And the next week I lost five. And then I lost four. And then the slow weight losses kept coming in. And I wasn't happy with that. It wasn't fast enough. I wasn't happy on the diet. I had stuck to it religiously for six or seven weeks. And then I just had a blowout. And I was like, oh, well, that's that done. I'm done. So... This time, I just kept thinking, I don't care how long it takes. When I was starting it, I had that mindset. I don't care how long it takes. I am just going to keep losing weight. And I don't have a picture in my head. I know at Slimming World, they tell you to put a picture, an ideal picture in your little book. Actually, I have that book here. Let me see. Where is it? Is it in here? Or maybe it's in a, one of the other books. I'll need to look for it. But it's like all your things and they have a space for a picture and the picture like a bikini or something that you want to wear or a body that you want to aim for. I don't have that in my head this time. I just want to lose the weight and get to my target weight and get, it's actually more of a target size that I have than a target weight and it doesn't matter how long it takes, I am in this for the long haul and I've now been on it for six months, like I said at the start of the video, so that mindset has helped me stay on this journey. I have used this quote before. I heard it from Alfie Days on one of his videos. He said, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And that's exactly what this is. This is not a sprint. It's not going to happen quickly. You're not going to see differences overnight. You're not going to lose all the weight overnight or even in a couple of months. It's a marathon. I'm in this for the long haul. And this is just me now. This is just my lifestyle now. The second thing that I've learned since joining Slimmer World is if you're expecting big losses every week, you will be disappointed big time. Now, people that have watched my videos for a while, repeat my mantra with me. Any losses again. Any losses again. Any losses again. Any losses again. Right, that mantra should be playing like a little... Um, dance thing in your head keep that in your head because any loss is again even a maintain is fine 
but I have that mantra. You guys who've watched my video for uh, the last six months will know that, that I keep saying that any loss is a gain. Those people that get disappointed with only half a pound loss, don't be disappointed. Just don't. The first time I'd done Summer World two years ago, when I would lose half a pound, I felt like a failure. I felt like, what have I done wrong? And even actually, to be quite honest, at the start of this journey, I was the same, but I had to change my mindset because I was going to fail this time. And I don't want to fail this time. Whether it's half a pound or three pound, any loss is a gain. You will get big losses in the first couple of weeks, but even if you're one of those people that don't, don't be disappointed. It's still going in the right direction. As long as the scale numbers are going down, you're winning in this journey. The third thing that I've learned since joining Summer World is you won't be able to see the difference. I still don't see the difference. And I have went down two dress sizes. I still feel that I look, when I look in the mirror, I still feel that I look the same as I did when I started my Summer World journey. But I'm obviously not. But I've obviously lost almost two stone and I've dropped two dress sizes. One of my biggest regrets on this Summer World journey is that I never took any before pictures. You know, people take them in their bras and they must get their partners to take them or they take them in the mirrors. I never done any of that and I so wish that I had. In the last month especially, I've just been wishing that I'd taken a picture every month on my journey just so I could compare the pictures and see that I was losing the weight because even though I know the scales have went down and my dress sizes have went down and I feel so much better anyway, I can't see the difference when I look in the mirror. I still can't see it. So I do highly recommend that those that have just started or are thinking about starting their Slimming World journey, I do recommend you do that. Take those before pictures and photograph your journey as you go along so you can see the difference. Not for anybody else, just so you can see the difference. Because one thing that I do know is that a lot of people see the difference in me straight away. But I don't see it. Number four in my 10 things I've learned about Slimming World is planning is the key to success. Plan everything, all your meals, everything. Now, for the last, how long have I been a mum? 11 years. For the last 11 years since I became a mother, I have always planned my monthly shop. But what I usually do is I sit down and I write all the meals that we're going to have. I don't specify what date we're going to have them. I just write down 30 odd meals, evening meals. But what I've learned since joining Summer World is that you need to try, and I don't always do it, I know I'm guilty of not always doing it myself, but you need to plan everything a few days in advance or a week in advance if you can help it. Plan your breakfast, plan your lunch, plan your dinner, plan your supper, plan snacks. And it, see when you have that plan, it is so much easier to stick to plan. You're less likely to cave and binge on any sweet treats or crisps or things like that. You're less likely to go hungry. You will already have planned the sin, your sins for the day because I find it so hard sometimes I'm counting along as I go and I do forget things as I do it along. And if something happens in your family life or work or you're asked to do an extra shift or something, if something happens, you won't fall off plan you won't be tempted to go to Tesco's and get a meal deal or the chip shop and get dinner because you've got a plan in place and it's just so much easier. And also, I really recommend batch cooking when you can. I made, God, months and months ago, I made the biggest batch of Speedy Spag Vault and I only used the last of it up recently, a few weeks ago. So yeah, definitely, if you can, if you're able to, batch cook. Number five is you don't need to exercise to lose weight, but it sure does help. Another thing that I'm not really great with because I do have problems with my back and you know, when I have free time, I would rather watch something on TV than go a walk. But I have found on the weeks that I do do a lot more walking because it really is the only exercise I can do at the minute with my back. I do find that my losses are a little bit more. Not that that's what I'm aiming for, but I just find my weight loss is a little bit more significant than when I don't exercise. And also, it's just freaking better for you. But if you can't exercise, don't think it's the end of the world. You don't have to exercise to lose weight. In the future, I'm aiming to actually do exercises that are more toning orientated than helping my weight loss. Yeah, I really don't want to talk about exercise a lot. I hate exercise. Number 
number six is quite an important one. And I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago in one of my videos. Do not compare yourself to others. And I mean, we shouldn't do that in life generally. We shouldn't do that, but it's hard not to. But on the Slimming World journey, don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare your weight loss to others' weight loss. On one hand, if you've not lost as much weight as somebody else has at the same stage in your journeys, don't panic, don't worry. You still lost, so you're still doing fine. On the other hand, if you've lost a lot more than somebody else on your journey, don't be looking down on them for it because that's just not nice. Everybody's journey is different in life and on Slimming World. Everybody's journey is different and there's all different things that come into effect with this. So uh, it's just too long to go into, but you know, there's, you know, lifestyle and there's your metabolism and there's how much you eat and when you're eating, etc, etc. There's so many factors that come down to your weight loss and it's your journey. It's your journey or my journey and mine alone. So just don't give a flying flip about anybody else and what their weight loss is. Just you do you and let everybody else do them. Number seven is a bad day, a bad meal, a naughty treat or snack does not mean you have failed and have to come off plan. Again, me two years ago versus me now. Two years ago when I was doing Summer World, six or seven weeks into my journey, I can't remember how long it was, I had a cheat meal and just that was it. That was it for me. I never went back on my Summer World journey. I never went back to class or anything like that. I just stopped doing it. I just stopped following the plan. That was because my mindset was a lot different. This time, I'm allowing myself cheat days or cheat meals because I'm so much more comfortable in the speed of my weight loss. I'm not, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. I don't feel that I have to lose four or five pounds every week. I'm happy if it's half a pound. So I have the cheat meals and celebrate occasions as I normally would. Like I had a buffet for WrestleMania last month, a couple of months ago. When I went to see Avengers last month, I had nachos and an ice blast. I had macaroni cheese. I've had meals at my dad's. You don't need to stick to plan 100% of the time until you get to target. It's just too much. I don't even think people that are healthy normally, I mean, there's very few of them in this world, but there's people that eat healthy all the time and even they have cheat meals. The Rock. The Rock has cheat meals. Have you seen The Rock's Instagram when he has his cheat meals? I mean, I don't even know how he fits it all in. His tiny little waist and things. He has massive, massive cheat meals. And have you seen him? He's got the body of Adonis. Right? So by allowing myself to have little cheat meals and things like that, I have also found it so much easier to stick to plan. And a cheat meal or a cheat snack does not mean a, a fall off plan for the whole day. Maybe a couple of times it has, if I've been unwell or that, but normally a cheap meal does not mean I come completely off plan. I may go the whole day on plan, have a, my macaroni cheese like I had one night a couple of weeks ago, and then that's it, that was it. The rest of the time I was on plan. And actually, that day that I had my macaroni, I never had any other sins apart from my macaroni. And I'm also not recommending you to have cheap meals or naughty treats every single day or every single week. Just allow it once in a while. And if you look back at my weekly weigh-ins, you'll see that there's a couple of times I've had the dominoes and once I lost three pound, even though I'd had the dominoes that week, and I think the other time it was maybe half a pound. So cheap meals and naughty snacks, they don't always affect your weight loss. They don't always mean you're gonna gain that week. I mean, if you're having quite a few a week, they're definitely gonna affect your weight loss, but I know Slimming World won't thank me for saying that but you can you can have your treats and you can have the food you love just don't do it every day or every week just do it every couple of weeks <laughs> number eight on my list is you won't miss as much food as you think you do now that doesn't go for all foods because i still have foods that i crave like going back to my macaroni cheese i hadn't had macaroni cheese since before christmas and i had it maybe mid-May, I think it was. But I had actually only been craving that for a few weeks before I had it. I hadn't missed it. And then I think one of my brothers or someone was having it one night and I started to crave it from then. But 
I didn't miss it as much as I thought I would because I usually have that once a month at least. It's usually always in my monthly meal plan. Another thing that, I mean, <laughs> it's taken a while to get over this is crisps. Crisps were the reason I was probably the size that I was or am now. I just love crisps. I could eat massive packs, you know, the big kettle chips. I could eat one of them in one sitting. And over the last, the last couple of months, definitely, I haven't missed them as much as I thought I would. I do still have the odd packet, but it's not the packets that I would normally have. It's like the all the snack packets, so they're not really crisps, they're just snacks. But they're within my sin allowance as well. And I don't have them very often. Another thing, this is probably one of the biggest changes that I was dreading when I started Slimming World was I was an iron brew addict. I was addicted. I love it. I still am addicted. But I never thought I would ever be able to drink the sugar-free stuff because before when I had, I didn't like it very much. But now that I've drunk it for so long, I couldn't go back to regular iron brew. I'm really addicted now to sugar-free iron brew, which in some ways still isn't good for me, but in other ways, as in I can still drink iron brew and lose weight, I'm happy with. I'm used to the taste now, the saccharine taste that you get with sugar-free drinks. I'm used to that now. And it's probably one of my biggest accomplishments since I started Slimming World. We're nearly at the end now. We're on to number nine. Body rejection issues. Okay, so a lot of you will have heard when you start your summer world journey, you suffer from a lot of flatulence. So you fart a lot, right? But your body gets used to this new way of eating and it settles down. Okay, one thing that I wasn't prepared for on this time on my summer world journey, because I never really done it a lot the last time. I had one big cheat meal and then I never went back. So this time, because I've been allowing myself a lot more treats and cheats, what I didn't realise would happen is that my body sort of has its own way of rejecting the food and telling me that it, it's not happy with me. Like, if I eat white bread, I feel like I've got glue stuck in my intestine. Or, and this might be a little bit too much information. Or if I have pizza or chips from the chip shop or something, which I haven't done very often, but if I have them, I usually have to go to the toilet quite soon after I've ate them. I know that's too much information, but that was never the case before. It's like some sort of form of IBS. In fact, the twice that I've had Domino's, when I woke up the following day, I felt like I was coming down with the flu or something. It was like, or maybe even like a, a hangover, like a food hangover. It, was, it wasn't pleasant and it wasn't like I was dying or anything like that. But your body does let you know that it's not happy with you for eating these bad foods. But I still continue to do it because they're still really tasty. And the last thing on my list, number 10, is quite a boring one actually. <laughs> Speed veg matters, but you can still lose weight without it. When I first started on my summer world journey, this time, and last time actually, I used to get into such a panic if I didn't have speed veg, or if I never had anything left in the fridge or the freezer for speed veg, I would get into such a panic because, oh my god, I'm not going to lose weight because I'm not getting my speed veg. But it's not the end of the world if you don't have speed veg. It does help. It does help. It's A, a lot better for you, and B, that taking the third out of your meal, it's so much better for you. But to be honest with you, I really haven't noticed any difference in my weight loss from when I'm doing my speed veg correctly or if I'm eating a lot more. I really haven't. But I'm not saying don't do the speed veg. Do the speed veg when you can and if you have stuff in. But if you don't have stuff in, do not panic over it because I used to get myself in such states where it. And now I'm just like, I do try and get my speed veg in. I always think about my speed veg. Sometimes you just don't want it. Sometimes you just get sick of the speed veg. Excuse me. I'm so gutted that corn, sweet corn, I'm so gutted that sweet corn is not a speed veg because I absolutely love it. It's my favourite vegetable and sometimes I just want to have that with my meal. But like I said, it's not the end of the world if you can't have it. And there's also a lot of people that don't eat a lot of veg out there. So if you're one of those people, excuse me, I'll have to move about a bit because my back's quite sore. If you're one of those people that do not like a lot of veg, you can still do Summer World. Just eat the veg that you like and don't panic that you're not going to have a great weight loss because you're not eating speed veg. You will still lose weight on Summer World without the speed veg. Slimming World are absolutely going to hate me for saying that, but it's true. 
it's true. Let me know any of you guys that are on the Summer World journey too. Let me know what what you think about that. It's a little bit controversial, but... And that is all 10 things that I've learned since joining Solomon World. I probably have learned a lot more, I just can't remember anymore. And I think 10's quite a nice round number and a nice title for the video. <laughs> if anybody else is doing Summer World, please let me know in the comments anything that you've learned that I haven't mentioned already. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time. Bye!